This is Kagi, which is a privacy-focused search engine which serves no ads. So as you can see, if I search for something like Garmin, instead of seeing a bunch of shopping results, I actually just get links and information about the company Garmin. The trade-off is that Kagi costs money. But they do this to provide an alternative model to something like Google, which sucks up all your data from your search, integrates everything, and serves you tons of ads. And here you can see if I search for Garmin on Google and scroll down a little bit, sure enough, you start getting into product placement and advertisements. This is a section that you would never see if you use Kagi as your search engine. It also serves as an alternate model to things like DuckDuckGo, StartPage, and Brave, which is my current default search engine, in that while these search engines do respect your privacy, as you'll see as I scroll down, they do still serve ads. Kagi also isn't shoving AI into your face all the time. <laughs> nor do you have to worry about Kagi manipulating your search results. As a matter of fact, in Kagi, if you click on one of these little shields, you can yourself raise or lower or even block websites in the result reporting. And that does allow for you to create something like your own little private search engine, which prioritizes results you care about and deprioritizes results that you don't care about. Kagi even provides a little website that shows you which websites have been most commonly lowered or raised by their users. Now, for the past three weeks, I've been using an unlimited plan on Kagi. I paid for it myself. I don't have any affiliation with this company, and they don't even know that I'm doing this. So the big important feature of Kagi is obviously the privacy. Since so searches are anonymous and private to you, Kagi does not log or associate searches with your account. They don't log or store your IP address. The IP address is only used temporarily when enriching location and map searches and is not shared with any other party. They only store cookies for site functionality. They don't use any web browser analytics or front-end telemetry. They don't display ads. They don't have first or third party tracking. They don't share customer data with third parties except as explicitly necessary. They only collect data to provide and protect their service. They proxy all images to prevent tracking from third parties. And they use HTTPS everywhere. They give a pretty good breakdown of what cookies and client data they need and why. They talk about how your data transfers to and from their servers even give you a breakdown of the logistics of user and query data. They talk about IP addresses, geolocation, user agents, what data gets logged, how it gets stored, how they use things for AI and their summarizer. They even have a warrant canary, so you can tell if they've ever been asked to deliver up any customer information. Now, from the beginning, one question that I had about Kagi is, you know, how do we know that everything will stay private? And, you know, I think it may be useful for some third party to provide an audit of their privacy just to make sure that they're doing what they say with user data or more applicably without user data. But they do have little incentive to violate user trust. Kagi is set up as a public benefit corporation, which allows them to operate the company based on more than simply maximizing shareholder value. Plus, with an entire business based on respecting user privacy, I do think that if they ever violate that commitment to user privacy, their entire business just goes out the window. Some other interesting aspects of the company is that on their board, they do have Norman Winarski, who is actually one of the co-founders of Siri, and that is, yes, that Siri, the one that is now part of Apple. One of their other board members is Stephen Wolfram, who is the founder and CEO of Wolfram Research, and you've probably heard of Wolfram Alpha, which is a fairly interesting search engine in its own right. And you may be interested to know that Wolfram Alpha is kind of integrated into Kagi. So some of your search results will be influenced by Wolfram Alpha. Kagi search results actually come from a mixture of sources. They have their own internal web and news index, but they also do source from every major search engine. So you're gonna get results, some of them from Kagi's own internal sources, some from Google, some from Bing, some from who knows where. They even use a specialized search engine, Marginalia, that specializes in small websites. As I mentioned, they also make calls to Wolfram Alpha and Apple for Maps, Wikipedia, and everywhere else. 
So I think the natural first question that anybody should have about a search engine is, well, does the search work? So let's just do a little demo between Kagi, Google, Bing, and the Brave search engine. So if we just type in something like, you know, GoPro 8 help, so the top Google result is just the manual for the GoPro Hero 8, and that seems to be the same thing on Kagi. On Bing, you start off getting results from the GoPro update page, and Brave, well, the first thing you get is a top deal on cameras from Best Buy, but then it does get into the product update page as well. As we scroll down, the next big area that Kagi is going to give us is the GoPro community and GoPro support Hero 8 help. From there on, you get some YouTube videos, beginner's guides, more results from Reddit. On Google, the next result is a bunch of videos. You get some people also ask, then you start getting into discussion forum results, user manuals, and finally you get into some GoPro community help links. On Bing, as we scroll down, we get a video section, and then you get into GoPro support. On Brave Search, we get into video results and then some reviews, some listicles, tutorials, and then finally quite a ways down before we even get to Reddit or the GoPro community results. And overall, I would say that this fairly accurately reflects my experience using Kagi. It gives pretty similar results to Google, Bing, and major search engines, but with fewer ads and I would say fewer listicles as well. So overall, I would rate the search results pretty good. Certainly in my day-to-day -day use, I have found it a full replacement. I haven't needed to go back to Google or Bing to search anything else. And some of the other interesting things about Kagi are the other features that it has built in. Like you see this shield with a little exclamation point. If I click on that, it tells me, look, this website has 21 ads and trackers detected, which you know, maybe useful. You might be able to avoid websites that overly scrape user data. This ability to raise, lower, or block, or pin results is also kind of interesting, although I personally haven't found that that useful because mostly I'm just looking for stuff. I don't know that I would consider myself a hardcore user, but for some people they may find that really useful because that would allow you to kind of customize your own search rankings and give you results that better suit what you're looking for in a search engine. So one thing about Kagi is you do have to have an account. And because of that, you do have to be logged in to access the search engine. However, they do offer session links, and that means that it will work in private mode also. So if I open up a private window and I type in how to raise chickens, you'll see that Kagi still works. And because of the session link, I can maintain access to the search engine even in private. Now, Kagi also has a couple of other features like a summarizer. And so if I paste in a web link, this is going to use an AI to generate a web page summary for whatever I just pasted in. It seems to be reasonably fast and to do a reasonable job. I don't know that I really need this feature, but it is there if you need it. Another thing that Kagi has is this fast GPT. And if I type in a query here, Kagi is going to use its own GPT to generate an answer to your question. Given their dedication to privacy and their claimed experience with AI, I am presuming that they have developed their own LLM for this purpose. One of the other features that Kagi has is the implementation of search banks. So you start these by typing an exclamation point and then a alphanumeric code, and you can immediately search individual websites like Reddit. And so if I want to search for Espresso on Reddit, instead of having to type Espresso in Reddit, I can use this exclamation point R. And this is a little different because it actually takes me to Reddit's search engine. So this isn't actually running through Kagi search engine, it actually directly uses a website's own built-in search engine. You just jump straight to it. Now, one feature that Kagi currently doesn't have is their own map system. So if I type in something like Baltimore, Maryland, you can see that there's a map result that pops up and I can come to maps. But if I open this up and you look down in the lower left-hand corner, you will see a little logo down here with an Apple on it. They are using Apple Maps currently. 
Now they do seem to have their own route navigation, which is kind of neat. However, I don't think you can actually navigate using this. There isn't currently an app for Android, which would be useful for my phone. You've got to use Kagi through a web browser. And so while it can give you a route to get somewhere, it doesn't look like you can actually navigate this. Now it's no surprise to me that they don't have an app on Android. Google's not exactly going to be excited about the potential of another app drink in their milkshake. So now let's get to the rub, which is Kagi costs money. So how much money? Well, it depends. If you just want to give it a try, Kagi will give you a one-time use for 100 searches. You can get up to 300 searches per month for $5, and if you want unlimited access, you pay $10 a month. For $25 a month, you also get some exclusives and early access to new features. Kagi also has some family plans, so you can get unlimited searches for two accounts for $14 and up to six accounts for $20 a month. Now, as a reference, I have made almost 2,000 searches since I've been using this search engine. So that's like 80 searches a day, and you know maybe this would be a little lower for the most part because I've done a lot of testing with the engine, but this is where it comes down to the value proposition. Is it worth $10 a month for the features that Kagi provides, for the privacy, for the lack of ads? And this is obviously a trade-off that you'll have to consider, but here's some things that I would mention. Number one, Brave Browser also doesn't track you, and you can pay for premium Brave Search for $3 a month, and that will get rid of all the ads there. Something like DuckDuckGo also is private, but it does serve ads, and the thing is, is really when it comes down to it with Kagi, you're not paying $10 for privacy, you're paying the $10 for the privacy and the lack of ads. And so for me, I do think that $10 a month is a bit too steep. I do think this is something that I would pay 2 to $3 for. But, you know, if they could figure out a way to get their own native maps with navigation working and you could, you know, bypass needing to use Google Maps for everything, uh, you know, that also may be worth a little bit more. And I could see maybe paying up to five bucks a month for something that has that type of usefulness to bypass that sort of data collection, which currently is mandatory. But I'm also not sure what's really possible because I don't know how much it costs them to make all those API calls that they're using and whether $10 a month is really paying for this service or if at scale they'll be able to lower their pricing. Maybe in the future the price may come down and it may become more viable to use paid search and to get rid of ads and to maintain your privacy all in one go at a fairly good value. So where does that leave us? Well, currently I'm probably gonna stick with Brave. And the reason is, is that while Brave Search may serve ads, I can mostly ignore them. It does still respect my privacy and I don't really need the extra features that Kagi has to offer. And if I really wanna get rid of ads, I can pay $3 a month and get Brave Search Premium, which is quite a bit cheaper. So I don't know that the value that Kagi offers is worth it for me. Now I haven't tried Brave Search Premium, so I don't know, maybe it's sucks. But I do know that $10 a month is pretty darn steep just for a search engine. So overall, I would say, look, I like Kagi. It, it's a good product. It works. And it looks like it does achieve its stated goals. But right now, the price is just a bit higher than I'm willing to pay. It's got really cool features, but they're features that I don't really need. But I can certainly understand why people love it. So that's where I'm going to end this video. I hope that it's been informative. And maybe you've never even heard of Kagi. And, you know, look, give that thing a try. You can use 300 searches for free. If you've got any feedback or comments, feel free to leave them down below. As always, I appreciate your time.